uh, concrete patio has been demolished. They had poured concrete up against the framing of the house with no flashing or anything right up under that vinyl. And it was trapping water and causing some rotting problems. So you can see that floor joists and the sill plates pretty much gone. This is the one we're going to replace. So you can get some of the siding out of the way so it can work. I take my uh, little nail puller, get up under one of the seams, and usually once you get it started, you can um, you can just rake it across there, and it'll pull that pull the seam up, apart. But I ran into an issue, so I went the next one up <clears throat> and uh, pull the nails out of both sides of that, and give it a good push down to unhook it from the one below it. What I found was they had uh, glued the one on the cut piece under the window. Uh, they had glued it to the piece below it, just mostly because it's a, a small piece, a real good way to nail that, but <clears throat> I'm not a big fan, but it does, it works, I guess, um, but you can't take them apart or without damaging the siding, um, it looks like construction adhesive, possibly, uh, which is probably not a good idea, that could melt the siding, actually, uh, so I took those two pieces off together, and um, get the rest of these pieces off. We'll save them and reuse them just because the old siding's faded. Even if you could find the same color, it's it's not going to match. Um, so I'll get all the rest of this off and get down to the nitty gritty here and uh, get our hands dirty here. So, mmm, mmm, yum, yum. Uh, yeah, it's gone. So I found a. Um, <coughs> Excuse me. I found a, a block right here in the middle. I'm going to run my saws all through there and do this half and half rather than doing the whole thing at once. Um, yeah, it's an exterior wall. I'm surprised it hasn't sagged more. Uh, I don't even think it sagged at all, really. Um, but yeah, so I cut next to that block. It's a good idea to go inside and make sure you know you're you're clear of. Uh, wires and stuff like that. I try not to bury the Sawzall blade or whatever kind of blade you're using just so you're only just barely cutting through the wood. I went in and looked but I couldn't really see a whole lot because of the framing. There's some framing in there that's pretty close to the wall. Anyhow, the, there's that block. It's actually uh, pretty solid that and the sill plate below it I think is what saved this thing from sagging any more um, than it has, really. Because, yeah, you can see this thing just gone. You can see the wires and stuff in there. So, yeah, you got to be careful. There was a cable uh, stapled to the back side of the sill plate. And then you got the um, uh, sill plate straps. You got to get the nails out of those or cut them or something. Um, the side's all rusted off. Those straps hold the uh, sill plate to the masonry and uh, I can get all that I think I'm gonna do half and half here so I cut this half out like I said the the block it's solid back here and and uh, I, I think I'm pretty sure that's probably what saved this thing from sinking um, so I'll do this first half on the left I get it all cleaned off and uh, Get my sill plate in there and then we'll do the other half uh, get the rim in too and then we'll do the other half make sure you clean off the bottom edge of your subfloor there so you don't hit anything when you go to put your rim in you want it to be nice and snug and you go hit nails and stuff so just take your soles all and cut those off make sure it's clean so i got the sill in and then after i get the rim in i'll cut this other side off and um, clean that out. You can see those couple of brick there got a little damage. The mason's going to come back and and fix those after I'm done. Um, I got half of it done. Now I'll do the other half. After I got that in, I, I ran nails up into the floor and into the bottom plate of the wall rather than trying to nail it down because there's not a whole lot of anything to nail down into. So after that, we'll get the, uh, I bent a piece of flashing to fit. It's got a little, I tried to make a little drip edge on the bottom there. And uh, after it's all done, 
Um, I'll go back and caulk everything, but it gets up under the siding an inch to an inch and a half, depending on where you're at on the house, but <clears throat> couldn't go up too far without pulling the siding off everywhere, so they don't really want to go to that. The trouble is really not that bad over there. Um, I did measure to the top of the J-channel before I took it off so I could put it back where it was, make sure everything goes back good, so I snap a line there. And the drip or the uh, J channel will hang down onto that flashing, and then we'll put the siding back on. I got this nifty little tool here. Um, it holds these tiny little trim nails for you because I got these big sausage fingers. Um, and uh, you could probably use pliers, but this thing's kind of nice. You just stick a nail in there and hold it up where, wherever you need to go, and it actually just holds the nail so you can punch it with the back side. Just hit it with a hammer. And, uh, It'll pound them in for you like that without smashing your fingers. So, you know, that works out pretty good, especially under the window there where it was kind of flopping around. So after I got all the flashing on, <clears throat> excuse me, I uh, went around and caulked everything, the corners and the seams and the nails and, and all that stuff. And up under the, the vinyl J channel there, I ran a bead. Uh, when the mason's done, I'll come back and... <clears throat> uh, Run some silicone between that and the in the masonry. So hope that helps.